Hey guys, Cool Blonde Wave back. I'm Aaron. I'm Melanie. And we're back with Supergirl, where previously... Lena's a witch! Uh, which witch? That witch. Okay. Sandwich. No. Huh? Where'd they, where did she go? Fortune Bay. Yeah, but where is that? At Fortune Bay. I'm assuming it's not in the States. Yeah. I don't know. You should have looked it up. Well, I thought it was in the States originally, but then later on I felt like it was in the States. Well, she did take a plane, so could be anywhere. Because didn't she say, like, your mom ran to the States? Mm-hmm. So, hmm. I don't know where Fortune... I mean, I want to look up real quick. Before we get into more stuff, I'm just curious where Lena left to last time, which was called Fortune Bay. Oh, I don't know where it is, but she went to Fortune Bay. What are you looking for? Fortune Bay. Ireland. <laughs> is it in Ireland? I don't know. That's uh, what I was getting to look up. I don't know where it is. But yeah, so she went to Fortune Stop Bay, where that was, and uh, learned that her mom was a witch, and her friends were witches, and that she could be a witch. And it's in her blood. And that's what that was. Meanwhile, we had Nixley, who was trying to get Mixie and now into he's in a ball. his ball, or her he's ball. He's in a blue ball. He's been blue balled. And the menagerie is trying to play with the ball. And collect a bunch of totems. Yeah. Gave the blue ball back. And we have to stop her from getting all the totems. And that to get the all source, I think is what it's called, or all stone. All stone. Which. And all of the totems. All state. No. There's no Jake. That's State Farm. That is State Farm. You're not. Never mind. Anyway, uh, yeah, so they're trying to stop all that kind of stuff. And we didn't have a poll because we were behind and we're going to have QAs and poll at the end of this one. So that's where we are. All state. Did you open the new one? Yes. Did you try to slip That's out? Where I did the go. No. Play it on 1.5. I'm not playing on 1.5. Two. Okay, I'm fine with two. <sighs> All right, Raw Riders, we're here with uh, season six, episode 12 of Supergirl. And we're going to get started in three, two, one. Something's off. What could have gone wrong? What the hell? Hey, Joey. I'm just checking in. Okay. Hey, Kelly. I'm taking early. my friend to see Hi. our new place. Hi. Okay. Call 911. 911 hasn't been called already? Oh, shit, man. He got hit with bricks. Oh, good. I thought he was inside. Yeah, when she said Orlando. Someone call 911, they'll be here soon. Did I? RP90, that new drug for respiratory issues, you can give that to me. Uh, RP90 is still very much in trials and extremely expensive. Oh. <laughs> you know those episodes that are a little on the nose? <laughs> that if he wants those health care grants approved by city council. <laughs> oh. Well, that seems... Experimental. Weird. Excuse me. Oh, leave it there for her. Oh. Oh. At least do it in your thigh. Oh, let me go do it. Oh. oh. No, why did it get all weird? Oh. She just sucked his life energy? What happened? These are someone's child. Mothers. Brothers. All of them. I'm scared it's only going to get worse. Kelly, our viewers care about traffic. A lot of people are suffering because of that Ormfall collapse in the Heights. If you covered what they were going through, it would bring needed attention and assistance. I know my demographic, and the Heights is just not newsworthy. I'm sorry, Kelly. Damn, no one cares, huh? What if they were turning blue? Kelly Olson, right? And you're John Jingle! <laughs> Star City. Well, I'm in Metropolis these days, but yes. James sent me. What? Oh, what? Why? Hey, I can't go. Can you go dig? We talk from time to time. We both have worked with someone. Oliver Queen was really good at seeing the big picture. And sometimes, because of that, he would overlook things. When I wanted to show him something he missed, sometimes he would require proof. Wish it didn't always require proof. I know. Tell me about it. <laughs> but right now, Kelly, we always do. What is that? 
blue the big glow. old blue glowing door. <laughs> this just like Bitch. that. Witch. <laughs> oh, that treatment I got has me feeling amazing and hungry. I would kill for a sandwich right now. Did she kill Did him? Did she earlier? just kill him to get a sandwich? Wait, so is this like fifth dimensional power that she's Somehow, yeah. getting? Is that guy dead? It, it's already found a source of fifth dimensional energy. At the Ormfell. Is that well. the Ormfell? The one Ormfell. Next you don't think she'd return to the scene of the crime, do you? So we're now caught up, careful, right? Supergirl. They need help. Well, Mixley will pay for what she did. I'll make sure of it. And once we get Mixie back, he'll be able to fix everything. Can just snap his fingers and put everything back to the way it was. But the way it was wasn't. Oh, looks like uh, found some more contaminated debris. The way it was is not good enough. <laughs> yeah, I imagine what she was gonna say. Yeah. Thank you. But I think it's more complicated than that. Orlando just called and Joey should be getting better, and he's not. I'm worried we're missing something. Alex? The Supergirl said that we've got all the debris. That should help everyone here. Dreamer? Kelly's like, I just want my voice heard. Take mine. Maybe we did miss something. Thank you. Oh, See, Mia was listening. She was listening. Yeah. I mean, they're still dealing with like a thing that could really cause problems. I get that. Yeah. You may need to suit up. Yes, the disaster two nights you ago was horrible okay. for all of us. Have we actually Does Diggle have to suit up? Does he have a suit? It's not us who are the problem, it's you. And the whole system that supports you. The same system that puts us down while it tells us to pull ourselves up. The people deserve better. Oh! That guy's just gonna hit that guy? Get me out of here. I tell you what, if I saw that thing chasing me in like a dark alley, it'd be scary as hell. Yeah. Like, oh shit! You know? Oh, Diggle's gonna fight these guys. I wish that her hair was up so then you could really tell. Oh! Everything is finally right. She's summoned the energy. Where did Diggle go? Fighting another two goons. Ah, got her hair. And yet, you know, and yet I am looking at people suffer. People that look like me. And everyone here is just too busy. Where is the outrage that people are gonna die without? Help. Without hope. Maybe you could spare a second for them. Sorry about that. I don't know what just happened. No need to apologize. Man, I love you want to talk about what's really going on? Diggle talk. Can we have the room? <laughs> I had an opportunity to become a special kind of hero. But it would have meant me leaving Lila. My kids. And everything I love behind. So I had to ask myself, what kind of hero do I really want to be? So the question is, what are you gonna do with what you're feeling right now? I want to be an advocate for the people who have lost hope. I'm sorry, I... it's okay. For a second there, I thought he was just gonna be a figment of her imagination or something. <laughs> I love that scene. That was a good scene. This is the stuff I want Kelly. I want Kelly fighting like these on the ground, like systemic -y kind of things, you know? Mm -hmm. Rather than like, I gotta fight aliens. But while you all have have the luxury of focusing on tomorrow, they are barely surviving today. I don't know how I missed this. Sometimes you are gonna miss things because they are different than your lived experience. It doesn't necessarily make you a bad person, but we really need to hear each other. I need your help. With that. With that? The helmet needs some work. she can't see that well. The sight lines aren't great. Okay. I've been waiting for this moment a very long time. Didn't Wynn make this outfit originally? Does he have ideas already? He's like, ideas. look at the ideas I've already got. <laughs> Holy crap, that's I'm a lot. I've been working on yours for quite a while. What do you think about something flashy? Yeah. Something flashy? <laughs> What's something flashy? I don't know. I'm curious what it's going to look like. And he was playing with his ring, too, so I'm like... 
Oh, is this flashy? Gold? Whoa! Oh, <laughs> I love it! That's so <laughs> different. <laughs> you don't know what you're doing. Oh, dang. Does that change the hair enough so for much. you? Yes! <laughs> is that her real hair? No. Remember how I we mean, talked about Mr. Be. T? I was like, alright, hurry up, get the dreads in there, go! Alright, let's get out there. Everybody's Ooh. sick. Up there! Get on the street. It's definitely flashy. I love it so much. <laughs> oh, she's like shooting her with the shield. Get that council woman out here. She's gonna destroy the city. He's so cute. I'm kind of glad they kind of keep these two around to do some story stuff with and whatnot. Yeah. I spoke with the doctors. They think it will take time for people to recover, but they will. Arrest the council woman. Remember. Always eat your vegetables. <laughs> Always Green vegetables. The cops got Rankin. Yes. Just excuse me, sir. Put her it in sounds jail. Sounds like the Heights is going to need a new council member. You fought harder than anyone I've met for what's right here. Make Orlando the council person? Hmm. I'm Guardian. <laughs> that was a hell of a debut. James will be so proud to see you like that. His headaches seem to be better, huh? He hasn't had one of something Jefferson right? Pierce once said. Jefferson Pierce. Don't be a hero to the people. Be a hero for the people. For the people. Headed back to Metropolis oh. already? I am. Oh, back to Metropolis. Worlds await. What? What do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean, Melanie? Worlds <laughs> Why does he say it like that? <sighs> Lena, you said your friends were in danger and you came to get your mail? I feel like a valve has been released and I have no control over my emotions. All I keep saying is that I'm tired. We're fighting for something that we should all be innately fighting for. Hold me. Man, <coughs> this episode blindsided me. We're dealing with fifth dimensional imps and like all this crazy alien stuff. And then, boom, we brought it back to Earth to no. like yeah. what, what CW has been doing with some episodes where they just hit some of these real life things right on the nose, you know? Sure. Like, I but, was not I mean, expecting this. They did, but I liked what they did. I mean, they used... They brought back in Diggle, had him helping Kelly, also had him talking about things that he's dealt with. Right. Where I think it did a good way because having Diggle come in, like he was trying to, she was trying to call James and right. couldn't get a hold of Jimmy. And sending Diggle in to talk where it's like, there's that thing where she's like, they, you know, they look like me or they share my face or whatever, right? And <clears throat> looking at everyone they have, like there is a variety of individuals in their tower, right? Like Nia has hers, John has his. Like most of them are aliens and stuff. Right. So like, but they can't, they don't quite hit the same points of what Kelly's after. Whereas Diggle, at least, you know, Jimmy would have, bringing in Diggle where he's lived here as a person of color, you know, like he can relate to a lot of the same kind of stuff. So bringing him in, I think was a really clever thing to do. Um, but no, yeah, it was, uh, it went from where initially I was like, well, this feels like it's going to be one of those, maybe one of those episodes where like maybe it's a little too heavy handed, right? Because they've done that with like the gun control episodes where with Supergirl and Arrow, yeah. we've talked about like, man, that was very heavy handed. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, guns are bad. We get it. Um, but uh, I thought it was going to be very heavy on like. All these people have a, a breathing problem. We're out of respirators. Like it was this very, rich woman gets the treatment that she wants. She gets some special treatment kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, it really hit to where you know. Like that's. I know I a very like, high Ooh. politician who got sick and needed respirators, and then just got better with a his own entourage of doctors and 
whatever he wanted to get him better and and he's like, oh, I'm fine. Don't worry about it. It's I safe, feel you know? better than. <laughs> so like, I fully get. I felt like that was definitely being pushed there, and I was like, well, how far are we gonna go with this? But then, right. I really felt like it rotated into something else. Right. Yeah. Um, or shifted, and like, while it was still, it still was adjacent. It still mixed with it. Like talking about how the heights were. These people that no one was seeing and no one was listening, but they had some lines that, I really liked the way they kind of talked about it, where it's like. It was Carr and Kelly, I think, that were talking. Where it's yeah, I wrote that time down because I'm like, dang, we're gonna have to go back and listen to some of that. Sure, but I mean, it was it was it really was beautiful. The idea of like, sure, I know you're trying to help people, and I know you stood with the aliens, and that was important to you because you could relate to right. that. But when you can't relate to certain experiences, lots of people don't see those the same and don't see how important those are. And like just just admit that you have blind spots. Yeah. And like, be able to admit that to yourself, and then we sure. can move forward. And There's the lines of guilt. Like, my favorite was guilt is an inactive emotion. Like you may feel guilty about something, but that doesn't get anything done. Sure. You have to do something, and I like that. No, and there's, you can't just say like, well, you know. I've suffered too, and one because everyone has different things, and you can't necessarily measure everyone's suffrage and right. you know what things they've gone through and all that kind of stuff too. But you can listen and try to an understand ally. and relate, and at least like understand or try to understand. And some of it you can't understand, and I like that too with Kelly and Alex at the end, where she's mm-hmm. like, "I'm not going to say I understand, or that I'll ever fully understand, you know, but I want to be here for you, and I don't, I want to know what to do." And I like. Kelly's admitting at the end, like, don't make me feel like I have to communicate it all to you. Like, just give me space, give me time, and, like, just be there. Hold me. (laughs) But, yeah, I agree. Like, the conversation with Kelly and Alex and what she says of what to do. And the idea, too, of, like, the idea of exhausted and tired, like... Diggle says about like use exhaustion help it fuel what you're pushing for and what you're going after but she talks about being tired and not in the fact that she's just like sleepy not sleepy, not just that yeah but, but just like, tired of overwhelmed <laughs> the line of like I'm tired for what should innately be everyone fighting for what everyone should innately be fighting for like equality and you know fairness and all that kind of stuff mm-hmm. which I get like it's it's crazy. I also don't fully get the idea of... it has got to just be some people just not understanding and not listening when there's the idea of, like, this kind of stuff. And it's like, well, why isn't this on the news? I'm going to call and tell them on the news. Like, hey, look, people are getting hurt, this and this and this. It's like, well, that's not going to get viewers. And I know what viewers want. They want traffic. Yeah. I was like, geez, really? Traffic prioritizes over people, like, dying? I know. You know? Like, it's... So, and it, it's it's media and it's politician. Like, they've covered all that kind of stuff. And right. I like the idea of getting someone in there who wants to change themselves, like getting Orlando in there. Like, I don't... Yeah. Is that going to happen or is that likely to happen? I don't know. Him becoming councilman. Yeah, I don't know. He's so young. <clears throat> sure. And he's not going to have, like, the money behind him for a campaign. Right. Not like that one woman has now because of getting paid by the other politician. I know, right? So... But we dealt with all that kind of stuff uh, a few episodes ago as well, where like that politician was like, "Well, I didn't change, but you changed their minds." So it's like, well, there can, so there can be some change happening. There is some stuff. Some people will listen to certain things. They need to know about it. Right. Like you're gonna have some people like this one lady who don't care and is after whatever she can get for herself. She's gonna tear down that whole area. Not just that one building, but we can take out this whole neighborhood and bring in five companies. You know, like. That's not a, this is what's good for the people kind of thing. Mm-hmm. She's tearing down people's homes and I stuff. I like the response know? that the other councilman had was the fact that it sounds like your town needs uh, housing more than these companies. And then she's like, here's this money. <laughs> yeah. She's like, oh, my town doesn't know what they want. Yeah. I'm glad that she's gone. No, I'm glad that she got arrested for what she was doing there. Like, I was like, Jesus, really? No one, you better arrest this woman. Ugh. I also wanted to see what you think of uh, what you think of the guardian outfit. I love it, and I love her hair. Like I, 
it's just gorgeous. I, uh, like her hair makes her fighting, like the whoever's going to be in the suit for doubles or whatnot, it's going to make it so much flowier and just like going to be so much fun to watch her move. Actually fighting and yeah. stuff, sure. So I'm excited to see it in action. <laughs> But the yeah, outfit's interesting. It's her own thing. I think it's fine. I honestly feel like this kind of stuff that she was after, like all the other people in the tower were after M- Mixie. Mixley. Uh, Mixie and Mixley. Right. Okay. <clears throat> all of them were after them. Alien stuff, dimensional stuff, can control the whole universe, yada yada. Bad things, right? Right. But I like Kelly going for the more grounded kind of like sure that one politician got Mm -hmm. magical powers and wanted to destroy everything but more grounded issues of these people need to be safe right now versus we got to stop this impending doom of the universe like you said before fighting the system versus the monsters so i kind of like that and i feel like like these kind of stories like i really like the story i thought it was really good and the way it played out and how like the conversations went i enjoyed the conversation with uh with Diggle and Kelly, with Kelly and Kara, with Kelly and Alex, with John, John and, and Alex. Alex. Yeah. Like, John talking about, like, being a Martian, but taking a black man's face and could have changed at any time, but, like, Kelly and James and them couldn't do that. But feeling like an outsider and never feeling like he really belonged. Like, that, that's one thing. Like, Kelly and him can't, like, he can't fully relate to Kelly. No. Because he's also an alien and he chose his face. As opposed to, like, that's why I like that they brought Diggle in for it. But he still has some experience for the amount of time he's been on this planet with his face, you know? So I really liked a lot of that. And I loved Diggle in this episode. Like, he fit so well, so strategically well sure. in this episode. <laughs> Except for whenever they were looking at the stuff, like, with the little, like, things. Like, they went downstairs, like, what's in behind this door? It's, like, big blue stuff. When they go in there, and then later on, it was it was kind of funny because later on, they came back in, and we're looking underground, and it's just, like, in the background, you just see Diggle, like, using a flashlight, just kind of, like, um, what's he doing? It just didn't look as... Official? Yeah, it didn't look like he was really doing much. Everyone else had, like, things where they're, like... He's just, like dark (laughs) (laughs) well that's not exactly what I meant by my previous comment (laughs) I just meant that he the way that this episode was written he fit very well into this episode yeah sure so I'm glad that he was here I'm upset that he might be done like I might not get him next episode (laughs) Well, we won't especially get him next with, episode. Especially with his ending of um, World's Await. <laughs> with the whole Metropolis thing, like, maybe he could show up in Superman and Lois again because they've done Metropolis and Smallville kind of things. But, no. I was really confused with two things. <clears throat> the World's Await one, of course, is like, well, what does that, that mean? That must mean, mm-hmm. that must mean, right? What else <laughs> does it mean? But he also had the line where he said about, like, I, I had a choice on what kind of hero I wanted to be and one that would had me leave Lila and the kids. Right. And I was like, well, what's he referring well, for to? For one, that... kids. Yeah, they have kids. They have a boy and a girl now? Yeah. I thought that the boy <clears throat> so turned into a girl. They had one, and then because of Barry's shenanigans, he got two, or he got the other one, right? He, he got it the switched, opposite sex. switched sexes. Oh, right. And then whenever the crisis thing happened, he had mm-hmm. both. Oh, yeah, that's right. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. I can't remember the names of them. Sarah's one. Yes. I don't remember the other one. I don't remember the boy. But yeah, so that's what happened. So he has two, one boy, one girl. So they did that. But yeah, I don't know. The I'm like, were they talking about when he took up the mantle of Green Arrow, but then gave it up being Green Arrow? Maybe. Or... Or future shenanigans. <laughs> well, yeah, but... What the weird thing is, like, I was given a choice on leaving Lila and the kids, and it felt like his choice was no, kind of what he was talking about. But he's not with Lila and the kids But maybe his right answer now. was yes. But then he said worlds await, which makes me think of Green Lantern things. Right. But, I mean, with the teaser that we had, was it at the end of Arrow with him? Yeah, that's when the 
and you yeah. open it up and there's a thing. So, of course, that's kind of where our mind goes to. Sure. I really right. think, and I don't know, I might have to try to check out and see if uh, uh, Black Lightning had a yeah. Diggle appearance or anything, because I don't know. But uh, don't look at it right now. We'll have to just watch Black Lightning. I haven't even watched season three yet because I was holding off, but season I don't think we're going to be doing reactions to season it now. So. Good. so I might just watch three and four on my own. Especially watching it with, like, the crossover stuff. I mean, I heard, made it good. I heard from people, um, I think it was on Twitter or something like that, where, like, season three was a lot of people's, like, favorite or at least better. It was better than two. Like one was good, two was people didn't like I as much. Didn't watch two. Three was really good. <laughs> Three was really good, and then four I heard wasn't as good. So. Well, <clears throat> that's understandable. <clears throat> but I wonder if he makes any appearances there. But I'm pretty sure they do. Diggle shows up in Superman and, and Lois, and he had some lines there that made me think that that was the first occurrence timeline wise mm-hmm. for him, and then he goes to Gotham for Batman and Batwoman. Mm-hmm. It has that moment there where he shows up there with, um, oh shoot, Batwing. Damn, Luke. Luke. I'm like Bat. I'm, I'm like I don't remember him at all in Batwoman, and I know I watched it. So. And that's, that, that comes back in like a few weeks, like beginning of October or something, or okay, middle of October. I don't know. Anyway, um, so there was that. Then I believe he shows up in Flash, where he was still having headaches, and he's like Gotham couldn't solve it. And then he said something like, I need to do something that I've been putting, like, avoiding for a while. And then I feel like that happened, whatever it was. So and then it he must shows be up Black here. Lightning because he talks about I don't. I don't know. Him. I don't know if they would tie him into that because he doesn't have as strong of a connection to those guys. Only Crisis that I've ever seen. But I mean, he but said that he talked to Jefferson. Yes, as Jefferson Pierce said, yada yada. So, but I can't imagine that you would put that element there. I feel like it's a blank spot where we don't know what happened, and then we have this, and he doesn't seem to have any headaches, right? Because there were no headaches here. Well, I'm sure the CW folks were like, you know what, if we tease all of this, and everyone watches all these other shows, but not Black Lightning, everyone's going to go and watch Black Lightning. Maybe. Alternatively, um, maybe you do Batwoman, Flash, Superman and Lois and that. Superman and Lois, I don't remember having any headaches, but he had a line that made me feel like it was ahead of it. But maybe it was just him being like, I ha- I'm going to deal with this thing now or something. I don't know. But he had like an avoidance line where it felt like he was avoiding what he needed to do. And then it caused headaches. Then he went to Gotham for headaches. Then he went to Flash. Then he's like, all right, I got to deal with this. And he deals with it. And then he comes here. And then he has worlds to wait. Maybe his big decision was on Black Lightning. That would be ridiculous, and I think you're wrong. Why? There's no way they would do that. Why? Because How now is it connected? we all are going to How is it connected? Black it's Lightning. not the same city. There's no one there that would None understand of any of it. None are the same city. Yeah, but why would he just take his ring to fucking what was it called? I don't remember. Damn, where they live. I know. Why would he take his ring there to deal with it? It's the most ridiculous thing I ever heard. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah, it's impossible. There's no way they did Well, that. now, like also, I said, it's making us want to go watch Black Lightning. Also, so. I think that they ended that before Flash and Superman and Lois did that. See, theirs. that's what I was wondering. So, like Their fourth season ended. It's already done. They, they're they done. I thought that was last season. I think it was a while back. So, maybe they will, there wasn't a No, there's no last There's no last season. It ended before, like, Legends did or something. Like, while Batwoman was going on. Like, it ended. That was the last season they did. Right. Right? I'm saying the. Uh, that was the last season. Yes. Yeah, they canceled it. So, but I'm saying it happened before whatever season this is considered right now with Supergirl and it was, whatnot. It was with these seasons. That was the seasonal year. If that's what you're saying. Okay. Superman and Lois, season four, Black Lightning, season six so of then Supergirl. Diggle might be Legend, in... No, it's impossible. Well, then you said It happened that. before with Batwoman. The last airing date of Black Lightning Season 4 was... I know airing-wise, but right now their schedules are so screwed no, up. No, because it would have been so much earlier. That's what I'm saying. They didn't do that. And it makes no sense for them to have done that. Story-wise makes no sense. Time-wise makes no sense. 
and I'm going to look up the last episode airing date because it would have been before he even showed up in um, Batwoman, I think, right? May 24th of this year. When was the Batwoman airing? Season 2, last airing date was June 27th. But for them to do that then would make no sense. Because you would have Batwoman, then you would have that from Black Lightning. So right, the only but thing, like I said, I, I don't know like what season we're technically in right now because six the things kind of got screwed no, up. You can't look at that. The season. I know, but that's what my point was. But I mean, I just looked it up, and he's confirmed it's not. He's not. In Why would Black you tell me that? Now I have no reason to watch Black Lightning. <laughs> We're gonna, I'm going to watch it. Anyway. Well, now I'm not. That's what I'm <laughs> okay. saying. You, you took away my reasoning. You weren't listening to what I was saying either. Because <laughs> I was going to say, he could have shown up as some stuff going on, but it also made no sense for him to show up for, look, I got a ring, and he puts it on. Like, that's not what they did. You know what I mean? Just because of the way it fell out, and he has, like... <laughs> that's why I was so confused why he brought up Pierce. Because he has, like, this much screen time with Pierce in Crisis, if he even got any. Because Pierce showed up to help the Flash run real fast on a treadmill, and then he went back to his daughters. It was like a ha- it, was, it, was, yeah. it was such a small I little bit of a thing. Barely remember him being there. And I don't think Diggle was a part of it. I'm pretty sure Diggle was missing at that point. Mm, possibly. Or somewhere else. Well, maybe he is in it. Because- Quit looking stuff <laughs> up. Quit. The whole idea is to not have spoilers. <laughs> anyway, time-wise, of when it ended, makes no sense, because they would have gone Batwoman, then they would have had that, because that ended in May, and Batwoman didn't end until the end of June. So it wouldn't make sense for it to fit in anywhere in here. It would have to be, like, between Batwoman and Flash, if anything. So there's no diggle there that's going to be giving you an answer here. They literally would have gone, I got something to deal with, what did he deal with? I don't know. Supergirl. I think I think it's literally how it would have to play out to where we still don't know exactly what's going on. That's They're true. teasing us with shit, and I don't know what's going on. Because he already had uh, Legends appearance, right? Yeah, and that wasn't even tied in. I know. That was just him being uh, So it's not going to be there on Legends. So either A, he... And that's the thing. They're teasing it to where it's like, okay, well, he must have taken the ring. It must be what it is. But what if they're... Fu- what if Lila's like, hey, Diggle, we're going to send you to space, <laughs> you know? <laughs> you're going to get on a rocket, and you're going to go there. And he's like, all right, world's a wait, you know? And he's like, well, what about the ring? He's like, what ring? He's like, ah. So I don't know what's going on. I don't know. But it must be nodding towards him having a Green Lantern ring and doing Green Lantern stuff. I'm really excited about that. It's a nod towards there's going to be more Diggle. But I don't know where it's going to be. I don't know. I- it can't be his own show. So do they have him, like, Lions? guest appear? No, they won't do that because it's some glowy CGI guy that they got to spend money on, and they don't do that. <laughs> Everyone there has to have no powers and always got into trouble, so you fight with your feet. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but that's what I love about the show. I just want powered people on a powered I don't. show. I love the fact that they, like, don't use their powers even though they have their powers. They don't. I... Name one person who has a power on Legends right Nate. now. Nate! That's it. <laughs> That's the one person. I just said two. Name Everyone two else kind of. Well, no one else the has to- it. The power, nope, the necklace. No, you can take thing. it off. They can even give it to someone else to use. <laughs> Here, you use this. <laughs> Thanks. Um, Heat wave? Nope, gun. You can hand that to anybody. Gun. <laughs> out of ammo. Actually ran out of ammo this past Legends thing at some point. I'm like, what? Sarah, what super fighting. Although Sarah can heal now. Adam's gone. They got rid of him. And he still didn't have a power. He had a suit. He didn't take it with him most of the time. <laughs> yeah. Nora, she had powers. Yeah. They got rid of her too. I know. <laughs> Who had powers? Uh, Zari and her brother. No. Yeah. They don't have, they have a totem. And if you take it off, they don't got it. And. Um, Nate Haywar- Haywood. He's one. That's the only one right now. They used to have Jefferson and Stein. But then they got rid of them. Or what they would do is split them up all the time. It's like, Stein, you stay on the ship. I I'll run out here. It's like, what, what if you need That to... one didn't make any sense. What if you need to I'm do like, with powers? Yeah. He took a bomb and went... Psh, 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 melted it. 
Um, so I don't know. They had Wally for a while. He was done really well, and then, then they got rid of him. Later. <laughs> yeah, they removed that. Constantine. Bebo. Constantine has magic powers. Mm-hmm. Bebo so that's has usually powers. Pretty. Bebo does not. Let's go to fuck <laughs> Q and A's. We're done with this. Episode of Supergirl, I thought was really good. I really liked it. Yes. And I feel like I could watch more of Kelly doing these kinds of things. Oh, yeah. I love it. Like, if it's it. written as well as this was written, I, I enjoyed it quite a bit. Just watching her fight the system was great. <laughs> All right, guys, we're going to go on to Q&As. I'm going to try to go back and see if there's a few things from last week that might have pertained to something that maybe we didn't talk about or miss. If you guys want to submit any questions, thoughts, concerns, um, Whatever. Uh, hashtag Supergirl Q&A, and you can tag us at Blind Wave Crew. You can find links to that in the description below. All right, so Ross Max says, do you like that Lena could possibly have magic powers? And Angel of the Night says, hey, so Lena's a witch then, so probably she'll have some sort of powers. I feel like William is the only one of the main cast that isn't a superhero and does not have powers. So what are your thoughts on Lena having possible magic powers because like there's a good point like this show has the opposite of legends where Nia has powers Brainy has powers John has powers Alex doesn't has have powers but she has the switcher gun thing she put a rocket launcher shot a cat last time <laughs> yeah you know <clears throat> so there's definitely there's definitely a lot of powers and they're all varied though which is nice Sure. Like, this one has, like, what legends should be, is I feel like there should be a variety of powers, and they're not all the same. Like, while John and uh, Kara kind of have similar stuff, there's also some differences. Like, he doesn't have heat vision, but he can phase through stuff, you know? He has psychic powers. She can blow you away. So. And he can look at, like, whatever. Yeah. But what do you think about Lena having, possibly, uh, magic powers? See... I don't know if, like, it's comic book lore, and I really hope that it's comic book related or something. Otherwise, it kind of feels a little out of place. Other than the fact that she's still Morgana in my heart forever and always. Forever and always. But, I don't know. I think it does feel a little out of place. And that they are intentionally placing this so then that she can have magic fight magic. Mm, and fight Nixley. Yeah. And I don't know how I feel about that. What about you? Um, I think it's one of those things where, similar to Kelly, I kind of want to see what they do with it. Like, I'm not against her having some kind of witchy powers or something. Mm-hmm. Um, I wasn't against Kelly being guardian. But not everyone needs to be, I'm here and ready to fight some kind of big galactic terrible event or whatever, you know? Like, I really hope that if they keep, if they keep Kelly on this path, let her do these kind of things. Let her be helping the people. Yeah. Much more ground level. A little bit more of like what like Daredevil and Luke Cage and that kind of stuff, mm-hmm. what they were in the Netflix Marvel show to like Iron Man and Captain America, right? Like those guys were handling like huge events and uh, these guys are going to invade or blow th- big things up and whatever. But they were handling like Luke Cage handled a lot of like community things and you know, maybe gun violence or whatever, or gangs or something, you know? Like, Kelly handling this kind of stuff and kind of fighting uh, political and systemic stuff and also being able to be there to help protect people from the people who have, like, they have the power and they're abusing it. Like, Mm -hmm. I think that that could be an interesting ground-level kind of hero versus, like, and then they have Supergirl. Yeah. So I'm not against Lena having magic powers. It just depends on where they go with them. And the other thing, too, is like it feels late in the game to introduce it with it being the final season. I know, right? Like, I think we only have probably 10 more episodes or so, you know? Mm-hmm. Something along those lines. I imagine we end around 23 or so, you know? Yeah, okay, yeah. So, I don't know. It depends what they do. I also thought maybe it was too late in the game for Kelly, but I really like this episode. And it really feed it into, like, what I feel like sh- her guardian should be. Because it felt like Jimmy was like, ah, oh, I'm going to be the guardian. I'm going to protect the people. And then he's fighting Parasite with, like, mon and yeah. stuff. And I'm like, it's not quite what I was picturing, but all right. A lot of people are saying that the totems sounded a lot like the Paragons, which mm-hmm. we talked about that, too, during the discussion. Um, they have kind of some similarities, but also they seem to be different. So I don't think it's going to be, like, a one-for-one matchup of all that kind of stuff. 
it's just the fact that they had hope and dream along with the totems and we're like well we already have dreamer and we already have the paragon of hope Mm -hmm. so oh dk lounge says fun fact this episode was not only directed by david ramsey which is diggle oh yeah but was also co-written by the actress who plays kelly so that's interesting. I thought it was really good. I thought Yeah, I loved it. From the co writing and the directing standpoint, like I really enjoyed what the actors and stuff also did and All what we got story wise. I wonder if she wrote a lot of the dialogue for these kind of things too. I wonder who the other co writer was. You know? Or like how much like freedom they gave her to like work on the script or anything, you know? Out, but it was beautiful. It wasn't like last episode where I'm like, that felt out of character. Sure, yeah. <laughs> like this whole episode, I'm like, oh, I love it. Dr. Winchester says, with Diggle's conversation with Kelly, it sounds like this is before Flash and Batwoman, so no Green Lantern yet, unfortunately, but that would probably just take focus away from Kelly's story anyway. I don't know. I mean, the world's a weight thing at the end. I feel like this is at the end of... I felt like it was Superman and Lois, and I've, I, it's been a while since I've seen it, so I don't remember what the lines were that he said that made me felt feel like he was there waiting first. and hadn't done anything yet. And then there's the headaches for Batwoman, and then there's the headaches in Flash, and then there's like a line where he's like, I gotta take care of something that I've been holding off on. I think he said that in Flash. And then I feel like he did something, and then he's here. Yeah, because he but, said that he did have a decision to make. Yeah. That he had sounded like he had already made this decision, whatever yeah. it may have been. See, I had the opportunity to become a special kind of hero. Mm-hmm. And it would have meant. It would have meant me leaving. Mm-hmm. So what does that mean? Especially when you pair that line with world's weight. Mm-hmm. That's what's so confusing. Because like, that makes it sound like he chose not to take up the mantle of whatever it was. Which maybe could have been related to somewhere in an arrow maybe but i don't know exactly what i mean he was green arrow that's when he was having his issues and his shakes and stuff and he couldn't shoot very well and he was like taking a drug i think or something like that to try to like keep going oh yeah remember that that's right but i don't think it's related to that but the fact that he says like it would have meant me leaving behind lila the kids and everything i loved but then he says world's await and i don't i don't know i don't know i'm not sure not sure, Dr. Winchester. Dr. Winchester says, Seeing Diggle is cool and all, but the best thing about this episode is that our heroes get to beat up that councilwoman. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not everyone gets the opportunity to fight those type of people. <laughs> the people that you really want to punch. Sure. Um, Angel of the Night says, uh, he reminds about the directing of uh, David Ramsey, also co-written by... Uh, Ozzy Tesfai? Tes, tes, Tesfai? I don't know how to say her last name at all. I probably don't know how to say her first name. Uh, Kelly's actress. Um, my question is, how would you rank Diggle's appearances in the shows? The longer, the better. <laughs> the more you get to see him? Yes. Because um, for Batwoman, I felt like it was like, oh, there's the hospital. Bye. <laughs> yeah, But, but he had a good one-on-one. He was there with Luke, Luke though. Which I Whenever liked. Luke really needed yeah. someone to talk to, which was good, but yeah. it wasn't long enough. Sure, but I liked what he was there for. Um, I like this one might be my favorite. Just what they did, what was going on with the episode, so and how well, well he fit into it and stuff. I really liked it. Um, after this one, maybe I don't know. If it's either Flash or or. Uh, actually I don't know which one I'll go with Flash and then Batwoman and then Superman and then Legends <laughs> I guess Jose says Melanie this question is for you did you finish Black Lightning and did you like that Diggle <laughs> referenced Jefferson when telling Kellen to be a, Kelly to be a hero for the people and the worst thing was I was like Jefferson that sounds so familiar <laughs> Jefferson Pierce who's that who'd you say I don't remember didn't you say someone else <laughs> yeah Oh, I gotta know that name. <laughs> no, I did not finish this past season. You did season the three? The last season, but yeah, I watched season three. And then... 
in season three, it was very good because it was very, like, Justice League story. Yeah. Like, the storyline was very good, and I loved it. Hmm. Well, yeah, because they were, I remember what they were dealing with at the end of season two. The Markovians. Yeah, the Markovian stuff, which is kind of YJ related as well. Mm -hmm. Markovia. Because I'm like, I know this. That's what it was, it's Markovia. I always thought of Sokovia and the Sokovian Accords because of Marvel, but it's Markovia. I don't, what? Markovia is their country yeah, in, right. in D.C. And I can never remember it. I always got confused with Sokovia, where Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver are from in the MCU, because oh, okay. they had the Sokovian Accords. And I could always think of that, but I could never think of Markovia. Hmm. Okay. Even though they use the same thing in Young Justice, as far as the country and stuff. The country of Markovia. I always forgot. Thank you. Jack Fern says, are you, are you starting to get worried the show is getting too focused on social issues instead of superhero stuff? Like it. Um, no. I think superheroes, like, read comic books. Most comic books dealt with social things and things in the real world. Uh, like, Peter Parker was always dealing with high school and, like, True. death of his family and, like... Oh, yeah. One of the things about like Peter Parker and Spider Man is I felt like it was a very relatable character because mm -hmm. he was dealing with so much real stuff. Mm -hmm. However, like that I could relate to, but maybe other people couldn't relate to that. So then you have other characters like Static Shock and Black Lightning, or mm -hmm. uh, um, I don't know, maybe Wonder Woman and Supergirl and stuff like that too. Like trying to find like different like race and sexualities and mm -hmm. you know like there's becoming more and more heroes that are like taking on social things like Nia is dealing as uh, transgender, transgender right that's a social thing in today's society where mm -hmm. you know, like put it, put her into the comics that's the thing that she has to deal with X-Men have been dealing with like equality and has been a, a, a version of like you know racial inequality in comics for a long time heck Magneto his biggest drive is that he, he was in a Jewish encampment and his family got taken from him and they died and that's that's a big point of that character and that's dealing with a a peoples being taken and treated less than a peoples should be treated you know they were treated not as people so mm -hmm. th that kind of stuff's been dealt with for a long time in all kinds of different comic iterations whether DC Marvel or whatever and there's even been if you don't want to go that specific as to like society like social issues mm -hmm. like there were comics of like the marvel superheroes working at like 9 11 at like a disaster you know a catastrophe and like cleaning up and stuff there and trying to help and people were like blaming them being like where were you so like i, I think that's what comics should do comics should one be like a pseudo escape and fun and whatnot but should also dive into like look at these problems and how things are being dealt with and what they should be dealt with or how they shouldn't be dealt with or mm -hmm. whatever. And I, I think that's how a lot of it should be. And how else are you going to have stories? you got to have conflict in some ways and stuff, and a lot of it should be dealing with real things. Otherwise, you can't connect as easily. I like what I believe Andrea said towards the beginning of this season is that they had um, like Jimmy Olsen following Superman with all Superman's stories of fighting these huge people and huge villains and then we have supergirl i want to know all the um super friends that are following her because she's more of the people and that you have supergirl that fights all of these injustices and fights with hope versus her powers and then you have superman generally fighting with his powers and fighting the mega villains so you have like the two parts of the heroes being shown by these two characters sure. and that's fun to follow because you can see all the powers and everything that supergirl can possibly do but then you can also see everything that she is doing down on a people level sure and that's what makes her the paragon of hope i mean straight up i, I love that they are bringing this in and fighting the injustices of this world sure and I think a lot of times what you, what you get to with uh, even villains, like the good villains, whether they're not super powered, amazing, strong beings, like, you know, Galactus, that's not a so, like society issue. That is just the big monster coming to eat the world, you know? Mm -hmm. But you dive into like backstories as to... Liberty. Agent Liberty. Agent Liberty, you huge. know? Um, 
And that is vulture. the thing. <laughs> vulture and why he was becoming the vulture, right? Or just various villains from all kinds of stuff. Like those things can be based on here's how society is and here's what I had to do in order to make ends meet or in order to uh, survive or whatever the case may be. Some villains are less, they have less motivation, I feel like, and they're just kind of bad to be bad. But other ones, I feel like, have those issues where it's like, here's what society did to me and why I became the way I did. And I think that's what makes them even better is because you can relate to like, oh man, like if I was on this side, what would I do? Like, I kind of understand him, but he's going just a little too far. Mm -hmm. But then you get things where it's like, well, sure, maybe this is how Doc Ock came to be and how Vulture came to be and how Rhino came to be. And I can relate to those stories or whatever. But then you get them all together and you have like a Sinister Six kind of story and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And those things don't necessarily matter at that point. And here's like a big culmination of why you dealt with all those things, you know? So, no, I don't think, uh, I don't think superhero shows should shy away from like society's issues i think it should feed them and motivate our heroes and make good and interesting stories and make the people that are watching them or reading them or whatever think about how it reflects to their life and what they've done and maybe what they could do better now we say this because we are in agreement of the point of views that we have seen but some people may see these as biases and might not agree with what they're seeing. I mean, sure, and you can have that in a lot of situations, but I think that, I think there's a difference in- Suck it up, buttercup. <laughs> I think there's a difference in how you respond to that. Like what Kelly said, right? And it, it, I think Alex and Kelly at the end kind of has a good example where like Alex wants to be there for Kelly and she doesn't know how and she doesn't know that she'll ever understand. But Kelly's thing is like, we just want to be heard and when we're speaking like even if you can't fully relate which is what she told a car right like you might be blinded by this and you just be like oh you're fine you know look at that councilwoman she seems fine well sure what advantages did she have or disadvantages do these people have and what's the difference and that's the thing that people don't see because oh well i can relate to this woman more than i can the sick person in the hospital it's like, but well, what's the difference? And just make sure you're not ignoring that fact. Like, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to agree with everything you're hearing all the time, but at least listen and hear, and then you can kind of decide once you know both sides of a story. And I think that's the main thing. Is a lot of people are just like, ah, no, that's not real. Or I heard from this, or I heard from that. But have you heard from, kind of like what the witch says. Like, she likes to hear it from the source. And as close to the source as you can get yeah. is better. Than, That's funny, yeah. than having like, well, here's what I saw on the computer from Facebook or here's what this one news media outlet told me. Because even in this one here where they talked to um, Andrea, that whole news outlet of CatCo Why covered, aren't you covering these kids that they, are sick? They covered traffic and they covered the cat attack and they didn't cover the Ormfell building collapse and all these people that were injured because that's not what our viewers wanted. And that sadly is kind of what happens a lot in media and things where it's like, well, that's not what the viewers wanted, so we're not going to talk about that. I mean, sometimes even here, we're like, well, should we talk about this? That's not something that usually we talk about, but sometimes in shows and stuff, we'll open up and talk about some things, especially when it is more so related. So it's, it's just sadly one of the things that kind of happened where it's like, well, what do the viewers want? But sometimes it's also about like, well, what do we need to talk about and what should we talk about? So... Just be open-minded and try to listen to both sides before just closing off and not discussing whatever it is or not even giving it a thought. Yeah. So. All right, guys. We still have a couple more Q&As, I think. Let me look through real quick and make sure that we... Um, Lover Sashimi says, Do you think that James will show up before the end of the series? No. No. I think that this was... This uh, was the time to have him if you yeah, ever Yeah, exactly. And they replaced him with Diggle, which I appreciate and I love. <coughs> so, but I... I think this would have been the time to bring him back in the situation that we have here. I mean, maybe there's another one in the future. Especially since you have Kelly stepping up into the guardian his role. shoes. Yeah. yeah. It'd be a good time to hand it over, a whole new suit, all that stuff happens. And instead, they have Jimmy send Diggle, which... 
I don't know their contracts. I know Jimmy looks a lot different than what he looked like when he left because <laughs> he was preparing for Mortal Kombat and was like True. getting in more shape and stuff. So, <laughs> well, I guess now he would look more Guardian esque. <laughs> well, yeah, he would, but didn't he leave to go do a small time paper at like a little town? I guess, yeah, like, I think so. Why did he bulk up so much doing that? <laughs> I don't Bubble says, I agree and disagree with Kelly. They have a big team. Not everyone needs to find the big bad. Divide and conquer. A team, fight the main threat. And B team, help the people. I think that's a fine idea. But the issue that Kelly was having was that none of them were helping. And none of them were hearing or listening or anything. They just kind of came and sucked up all the energy and the debris. And they said, all right, we're going to go. Because honestly, that was part of the usage of like, let's suck up this debris and then we'll use it to find Nixley and Mixie. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't really for Kelly's thing. It's just like they kind of coincided and mixed. So I think that you can divide and conquer, but her issue was that no one was even dividing to help her. It was just her. She's like, no one's listening to me. Yeah. Listen to what I have to say. You are missing a huge point here. Dip says, if the wave cave was about to collapse and you could... Each only save one item. What would you save? Hard drives. <laughs> Everyone grab a hard drive. Grab a computer. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Because everything else is kind of replaceable. Except for things that you have signed. And sure. custom made. I'm trying to think if there's anything we have signed by like someone who's not around anymore. I would probably prioritize that uh, I think that's at home isn't it uh, Chewbacca I have a Chewbacca at home that's signed by Peter Mayhew because mm-hmm. yeah. I know that that's on our list for things to grab if the house gets caught on fire sure. <laughs> kids first <laughs> but kids and hard drives from home Logan says I don't know why Diggle is acting like being Green Lantern would prevent him from being uh, with his family we have had multiple Green Lanterns live on Earth. It was cool to see some hand-to-hand, though. Uh, what has been your favorite fight for Supergirl? Um, I don't know if what he was talking about was, in fact, the Green Lantern thing or if it was something else. Because it felt like in that conversation, he didn't choose that. Because he said it would have made him have to give up family and all this stuff. But then at the end, he said, World's of Weight. Which made it feel like he did Did choose choose. the Green Lantern thing. So this one might have been something else, maybe? And then Green Lantern is a yes. (laughs) Or... He found a compromise to be with his family and choose Green Lantern. Well, what I was going to say is that... Or what happened is that he, at this point, midway through the show, was like, I would have had to done this, but I gave it up. And then by the end of the show, he's like... You know what? I gotta do it. I gotta be the hero, just like she chose to be the hero for Guardian. You know, like Ooh, maybe Kelly kind of helps motivate him to where, like, he hasn't chosen it here. But when he leaves, he is like, a "World's a wait. I'm gonna do it." Huh? Like maybe that is what they're doing. Maybe he did maybe. say no, but by the end of it, he's like, "Yes." I like that. Oh no. I'm interested to see. I just need more Diggle to find out. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Um, we just have to hold that pillow until. Mm-hmm. Until uh, he shows up again, I guess. <laughs> um, I Adrian sent me that pillow. <laughs> as far as favorite Supergirl fight, I really can't think of one right offhand. Um, typically, Supergirl isn't where I go to when I'm like, oh man, I need a good fight. <laughs> usually, it was <laughs> no. usually it was Arrow. Batwoman right. has been better lately. Um, over it the second season, I think better. it got a lot better. Yes. Um, the first season started getting really good, and the second season like kind of knocked back and then built back up again. Second season was good whenever they introduce the wolf spider. <laughs> I guess. That's my favorite fight. But. If you want to see some really good fights that are like a lot of fun, really good, really creative, Stargirl. Yeah. Stargirl, uh, both seasons so far have had some really cool fight moments and it's definitely something you should check out there if you want to see a cool fight. Alright guys, that's it for our Q&As. But before we leave, we need a poll. Oh all right, guys, with having a more Kelly-centric uh, episode here and having uh, her really stepping into her own as Guardian and what I think Guardian may be going forward here, 
Uh, we also had this new suit designed for her that uh, Brainy helped with, and we wanted to know what you guys thought, as we already asked before, what you thought about her being the Guardian. What do you think about the Guardian's new suit? Let us know over at Patreon mm-hmm. whether you like it or don't if like it. If you like the new flashy suit. The flashy suit, yeah, <laughs> the gold, which I think the gold's pretty cool. I think I like it overall. I loved Brainy. How about we make it flashy? <laughs> Did you, do you like the suit? I love the suit, yes. I love the suit? I love the hair with the suit, and I'm so excited to see it in action. Yeah. So let us know over at patreon.com slash blindwave what your thoughts are, and in the comments maybe let us know uh, if you like Kelly doing these kind of things and if this is what you're wanting or if uh, maybe you're not liking the way they're taking Kelly so much because uh, I was really worried it was going to be much more of just she's on the team dealing with team things. But it really feels like she's kind of dealing with her own stuff, and I really like that. So uh, let us know over there what you guys think at patreon.com slash blindwave. There's links down in the description below. And uh, that's it, guys. We'll see you guys next time. Uh, Hopefully we're not too late with that. Uh, We might be filming these on weekends. Uh, We'll kind of see how it goes. But we're still going to be doing Q&As, so even if we film these later, it gives you plenty of time to get your Q&As in. So make sure you guys follow us on Twitter there and uh, submit any thoughts, questions, concerns you have on the episode after you watch it. So, see you guys next week. Thank you guys so much for watching. While you're here, also hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on the next episode. Uh, As we said, it might be a little later than what it had been previously, and you don't want to miss when that goes up. So hit the subscribe, get the notification, and uh, all the other stuff in the description below. Check it all out. See you guys next time.